Amen. I love it. He is so good, isn't he? Yes. Amen. This is a new song we're going to sing today, so everybody's going to learn this together, all right? This is really a good song because it talks about God not just being in your life, but building your life, building himself, building his kingdom into your life, and leading you to build your life into other people's lives and make disciples. So it's a good song. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. Jesus. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one you could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. Holy. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me.
trust I will put my trust in you alone And I will not be shaken I will build my life up on your love It is a firm foundation Amen. 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 I love the words in this song because it's not just a nice song. It just says, through the things going on in our world, I will build my life upon your love and I will not be shaken. You know, there's a shaking going on in the world because God is going to reveal his kingdom and he's allowing the shaking to, to move everything that's not of his kingdom out of the way. So that's why it's so important for us to, to align our hearts with God and his purposes and look for his daily intervention in our lives so that we can see his firming of our lives on his foundation. Amen? Amen. I'm, I'm so glad he's got a hold of me because, you know, sometimes I lose my grip, but he's still got me. He's still got me. He's got you too. Amen. 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 Praise God. Wow. All right. Yeah. 
the devil nervous when we get happy he's like I don't know what they're up to or what's going on with God but God's moving in their lives and he gets scared so we need to just remember to rejoice it, it sets confusion in the enemy's camp so whenever you're going through a trial just start praising God and Satan will be walking it says he runs and he fears the praises of God's people he f- amen 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 hallelujah isn't it a wonderful thing to have the weapons of warfare that are, that are not carnal but mighty in God to the pulling down the strongholds, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. You can be seated. We're all fired up up here. <laughs> I'm ready to start running. I'm just getting up, getting going real good. What do you think, Pastor Vince? <laughs> well, you know, it just kind of gets, it gets all over you, you know. This, this Jesus spirit of God gets all over you and you get happy, you know, and it's, it's just wonderful. It's wonderful what, what he's done in my life. I mean, anybody that will come save me off of a back porch in the middle of a Leonard Skinner song called Freebird. Yeah, that's an amen. Right? That is a king. Because yep. he, he, he came to me and he said, Roosevelt, you are not free and you are not happy. You're, you live in fear. And that was the thing that brought me to Jesus was I just said, Lord, I'm giving it all to you. And I surrendered all of it. And he took all of it. And it's been a wonderful experience. And I love him more today than I ever have. He's so wonderful. Amen. Brother Ken, Brother Sister Dorothy. Hey, good morning. Good, right. morning. good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Grace Community Church. Yeah. We got I the know 18. I don't look like Ken. Hallelujah. <laughs> <laughs> But I just praise God for being here today, and I have been given this wonderful task to uh, give our announcements. We want to thank everybody for joining us out there on Facebook and online. And for those who will be listening to us on the radio, we just praise God for you tuning in. Hope that your souls will be blessed. That is our prayer each time. So this morning, I just want to bring you all the announcements. Uh, May 5th is National Day of Prayer. Yeah. And we're going to join in, as we always do with other churches, and we're going to be praying to the Most High God, okay? And we're going to do that from 5 to 6 p.m. Everyone is encouraged to come out. Oh, at Shelby Farms. I'm sorry, they didn't give me that part. If you didn't go to Shelby Farms last time, we had a great, great time. You really should come out. It's just a beautiful time of fellowship and, and prayer. Well, that first Saturday of every month, our men attempt to cook. I mean, our men cook breakfast. Uh, (laughs) It's at 8 a.m. They have great food and fellowship for any gentleman out there who would like to come out and engage with our men in time and fellowship. Please do. Again, it's at 8 a.m. We'd love to have any visitors come out. We just have a unique group of men because that's how God made us. All right, now the biggie, the biggie for our community, barbecue and soul. We praise God for this event. It is going to be Saturday, May 21st, 
from four to six. It is free, free, and more free. Y'all seen that commercial and the man's drinking out the fountain? We won't do that, but we're gonna give you free stuff. <laughs> We're going to have a lot of entertainment. As you can see, Dr. Alan McKinney, he is a fantabulous on that saxophone. Our worship leader, Roosevelt Brooks, who you all get to see every Sunday. Miss Becky Darnell, she has a gifted voice. Come out and hear her. And then the Jason Forey Band, Lord, Lord, and Lord. If you've never heard them, you, you're missing the treat, come out. We're just going to have a great time right here at the church. Come out, you'll see all of the children playing and the people singing, and it's just going to be beautiful. And, of course, lots of food, food, and more food. Yeah. All right, our women of grace. It is time close approaching for our next time together. It is wonderful. It is led by our first lady, our wonderful Ann Wilkins. She is wonderfully blessed by the Lord. We're going to have that May 14th at 11 o'clock. For those who have not been with us, we're going through the book called A Women's Bible Study for the Extraordinary 12 Women. 12 women. So we got one woman each month, and it's going to be fabulous. She started us off on the right foot with an introduction, and if you didn't get to do what we did that Saturday, it was such a warm and welcoming time. So come on out, ladies. Bible studies. Everybody needs it. Yes. Raise my hand. Okay. Pastor and teacher Vince Sanders, he's going to lead the class every Sunday at 915. Now, see, I need to see y'all at 915. Even if I'm not here at 915, I need to imagine you here at 915. Okay? So, <laughs> so we need to just come out and fellowship. It's a blessing, again, for family members of the congregation to come together, just learn together in a different setting. The pastor preaches, the pastor teaches, and Vince Sanders does them both. Hello. Hey, we got it going on. We got a pastor, associate pastor. No, we are covered by the blood. Thank you. So come on out and hear the word of God. All right, to see how Pastor Vince Sanders moves right on, he's going to start a study in the book of Romans Thursday evenings right here at the church, beginning May 12th at 6.30 p.m. Again, please come out, put on your whole armor of God. Okay. Wednesday fellowship dinner. As my husband would tell y'all, if you can't cook, I mean, he'd say, if you don't cook, let me, sorry, not can't cook, bring some food. If you do cook, you can make a dinner. But it's a good fellowship night for the church. It's Wednesday nights at 6 p.m. We meet for a fellowship meal. We have Bible study and prayer. See how our church continues to eat, pray, and, and have prayer, and do all those things. We don't stop at any day. We do it all the time. That's why we are 365 church. Okay. <laughs> Moving on, uh, we have the firearms training with Brother Chris Dew. Okay, I'm looking at a change. May 28th at 10 a.m. May 22nd is the last day to sign up. So if you saw that change in the dates, please make yourself uh, move accordingly because that did change. Ooh, girl talk. Girl talk is happening, and that is happening with Sister Sandy, with the young children, young girls. Uh, May 6th, you're going to have a meeting at 6 p.m. right here at the church for ages 10 through 16. They're going to talk about anxiety, and it is a judgment-free zone, so young ladies don't feel like you can't come out and just join in and, and get something from the Lord. All right, it looks like I've done everything except one thing here, well, two things. One is that uh, we're going to be going out two Saturdays prior to Barbecue with Soul. Yes. So members govern yourselves accordingly so we can all get together and get out there and canvas our neighborhood and meet our neighbors again. So many are accustomed to us, but let's do it again. Yeah. Uh, so at this time, we are going to get ourselves and hearts, minds ready. I know y'all been doing it through praise and worship. But now Amen. it's time for us to listen to the man of God. Amen. This is Soul Doc, for those who don't know. <laughs> he yeah. is... He is in training. You know how our doctors are uh, well, practicing medicine? Right. So he's practicing right here through the word of God. Yeah. So he can be like the great physician. Praise right. God for our Thank pastor. You. Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you. Ken, your wife might be taking your job. You really, you really need to, you really need to work, work on that. <laughs> Y'all, we're in our series called Elijah, Man on Fire. And God is preparing Elijah for one of the biggest assignments of any prophet in the Old Testament. It's a pivotal moment in the history of God's people, y'all. And uh, what's at stake is the whole northern kingdom through which came 
Ezekiel, Daniel, and some uh, uh, Isaiah, some prophecies that about the Messiah that were, you know, you know, pivotal for the for the where we are here today. It wouldn't have happened if the northern kingdom had continued along the road they were going. They had slipped into idol worship and pagan uh, celebrations of all kinds and, and just terrible things that they would have been disintegrated into the culture around them and there would be no word of God coming through and no prophecies of the Messiah coming through had that happened. And so uh, Elijah needs time away to clarify his vision, to hear the voice of God, to strengthen his faith. And he's been hidden in, at the brook Kareth and has been, uh, God has been delivering his food to him every morning and every night by ravens. And so the, uh, he's been drinking from the brook and now the brook has dried up. And so it's time for Elijah to move on. See, and, and God dried that brook up. Because God has another class for Elijah to go through in his prophet presentation, in his prophet preparation. And y'all, these classes are not offered online. These requ classes require for, for Elijah, they're, they're going to be real hands-on experience when gut-wrenching faith experience and God himself is the teacher, the professor. So he needs to go to another place Right now, so let's look at our, let's pick up our story. First Kings 17, verse 8, and let's read together. Then the word of the Lord came to him, Go at once to Zarephath in the region of Sidon and stay there. I have directed a widow there to supply you with food. So he went to Zarephath. When he came to the town gate, a widow was there gathering sticks. He called her and asked, Would you bring me a little water in a jar so that I may have a drink. As she was going to get it, he called, and bring me, please, a piece of bread. As surely as the Lord your God lives, she replied, I don't have any bread, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little olive oil in a jug. I am gathering a few sticks to take home and make a meal for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. And Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. Go home and do as you have said, but first, make me a small loaf of bread. Make for me what you have and bring it to me and then something for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord your God of the God of Israel says. The jar of flour will not be used up and the jug of oil will not run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the land. She went her way and did as Elijah told her. So there was food every day for Elijah and for the woman and her family. For the jar of oil was not used up and the jug of oil did not run dry in keeping with the word of the Lord spoken by Elijah. Father in heaven, we pray that you would anoint this far imperfect pastor to teach your word today. Lord, anoint our hearing. Help us to hear from you today, we pray in Jesus' name. Yeah. Y'all, so remember, uh, Elijah has pronounced to, to Ahab, the, the king, he was extremely ungodly king. You know, that he, he told him, it's not going to rain for three years. Or he actually told him, it's not going to rain till I say so. But it ended up being three years. And so... Today, let's learn together about some miracles. You know, number one, most miracles require at least two people. Most all the miracles in, in the Bible involve more than one person because God seldom does miracles that don't involve the testing of faith of others. And so this miracle required the faithfulness of two people. There was Elijah the prophet. So Elijah the prophet comes on the scene, y'all. It's about 850 years before Jesus Christ came, you know, the, the, he's, he's prophesying in what's called the northern kingdom. A split had taken place after King Solomon had died. And so the northern tribes went one way, 10 of the northern tribes, and the two southern tribes stayed down there. And Elijah is prophesying in the northern kingdom. And that happened about 75 years before Elijah comes on the scene. And it says, then the word of the Lord came to him. 
Go at once to Zarephath in the region of Sidon and stay there. I have directed a widow there to supply you with food. And you know, throughout the, the life of Elijah, it says the word of the Lord came to him and Elijah jumps. God says, jump. And he says, he says, how high? I mean, he starts, when God says something, he, he gets on it. So Elijah listens to the voice of God. And he's always about uh, doing what God said and being attentive to the word of God coming to him. And so as I could encourage you today, you know, he was God's word back in those days because he was a prophet speaking for God. You know, and God was giving him revelation. God has given us revelation in this word right here. And so we have this book to read. I want to encourage you to read it every day of your life. Y'all get in. If you've never done it, get in this and read the New Testament. Read it from cover to cover. Don't skip around. Y'all, there's deception is running crazy in this world right now. Y'all, you can, you can find a lie about just about everything. So get in this word and learn it for yourself so that you hear the voice of the Lord. So that you know what he's saying for yourself. You know, and so he tells him to go down to Zarephath. Now, Zarephath's actually up. Go up to Zarephath, y'all. Zarephath was, was pagan country. Big time pagan country. It was actually the hometown of Jezebel, Ahab's wife. Y'all, Jezebel was his real enemy. And so God is, God is telling uh, Elijah, go right into that territory. And I'm going to do a miracle there, Elijah. I'm going to show you what I can do right in the middle of all that pagan worship, all that pagan uh, life there, because I've got somebody there who's faithful to me. And so there was all this worship, Baal worship, and it, it even involved child sacrifice. Y'all, I was, I was going to say that it would make, uh, you know, it, it, it would even make San Francisco blush what they were doing. But I'm not so sure about that anymore. You know, it's gotten bad, y'all, uh, with what this latest thing they've got. I'll tell you about it next week. Of, of, uh, but anyway, so she's, she led God, Jezebel actually led people into this false worship. She's from up in that region. She marries King Ahab and she's led the whole northern kingdom into false worship. And so Elijah tells her, tells God, tells Elijah to go there in Zarephath and stay there. I want you to, I want you to stay there, Elijah. Don't look around when you get there because when you get there, it's going to look like nothing's happened there. It's going to look like the most desperate hopeless place that you're ever going to be and and you're going to be tempted to see nothing's going on here and move on but I don't want you to because because my help for you is right there it's in the middle of all that and it's not something you know it's not someplace else you know you're you're going to get your help right there because I've got plans so anyway so he's preparing Elijah for something that's way too big for him at this time. So, and then the other person involved in this miracle is the widow. Now, she was probably a young widow. She probably was in her early 30s at, at the latest. We know that from the story next week. But uh, she has a little boy. You know, and, and so God tells Elijah, look, I have directed a widow to supply you with food. Notice there's something, see this is something God already had planned out and this is not something Elijah's figured out. He would have never thought this one up. You know, it totally goes against all the natural reason and thinking that he could have for him to go to a, a poverty-stricken, drought-stricken region where people are starving to death and go and ask a widow to sustain him there. He's probably saying, God, you've got to be kidding. She's probably living on ramen noodles by now. You know, but, uh, but y'all, when, when Jesus was preaching the gospel one day in the synagogue and the people were amazed because he was preaching grace. You know, they were am amazed at the gracious words coming out of his mouth. And you know, the Pharisees, they don't like no grace. You know, they like rules so they can keep people under control. And, all. and so Jesus 
told them about this lady right here. And look what he says. You see, so what he's essentially saying is that, you know, you can't always find faithful people at church. You know, God, God didn't have any faithful people there. So I had to send Elijah up to Zarephath in, in verse in Luke 4, 25 and 26, it says, I, sh I assure you, there were many widows in Israel at Elijah's time. And, and when the sky was shut for three and a half years, and there was a severe famine throughout the land, yet Elijah was not sent to any of them in, in Israel, he says, but to a widow in Zarephath in the region of Sidon. And see, Jesus is saying there weren't any faithful people there. So he had to go up there and find him somebody to work this miracle. And y'all, she was the wrong ethnicity. The Jews believed that people of other ethnicities were inferior. You know, people might be racist, but God's not. And she, she was the wrong sex. Y'all, Jews thought women were inferior to men. And so, uh, you know, they, they would have never thought of that. But see, God thinks men can be just as, women can be just as, powerfully used by him as men can. So Jesus is saying that God had to go all the way up there. And y'all, did, did you know that God is always looking for somebody he can show himself strong in behalf? Look at 2 Chronicles 16, 9. It says, For the eyes of the Lord roam throughout the earth to show himself strong in those who are wholeheartedly devoted to him. See, God found this faithful widow up in Zarephath. He couldn't find one in in Israel. He had to go up there and, and find one. So God is looking so he can display his glory to somebody who will be wholeheartedly devoted. Would you be that person? Be wholeheartedly devoted and God will show himself strong in your behalf. So number two, y'all miracles can come even after we lose hope. This lady didn't have a whole lot of hope left. We see in the story. Y'all, in a, in a pagan nation like she was living in and, and in virtually every world, every kingdom on this planet and every nation, y'all, there was no social services. There was no safety net. That didn't really come until Christianity came on the scene. Y'all, there were really no, there was no caring for widows. There was virtually nothing to care for children, sick people, or anything else. Y'all, why are all the hospitals named after uh, and they're named after something to do with Christianity. Saint something or some denomination or something. Virtually every one of it was all started by Christianity. You can, you can look it up. It's historical fact. All that started. And, but there was nothing when this lady was there. And everyone, everyone was starving. And the last thing a man would want to do is marry a widow with a child to support. So, but apparently she was an honorable woman and, and y'all, nobody would have looked down on her in that world to doing whatever she needed to do to try to get some money for her family. But uh, so it says, so he went to Zarephath and when he came to the town gate, a widow was there gathering sticks and he called her and said, would you bring me a little water in a jar so I may have a drink? And, and as she was going to get it, he called and said, bring me please a piece of bread. And she says, as surely as the Lord your God lives, I don't have any bread, only a handful of flour in a jar and a little olive in oil in a jug. I am gathering a few sticks to take home and take a meal for myself and my son that we may eat it and die. She had enough for one more meal. And one more meal was all she needed. Y'all, she didn't need a pantry full of groceries right then. God had a plan to take care of her, and she was going to be faithful with the last little bit that she had. And so why does Elijah ask her of all people? You know, because God had a plan to show his glory. Y'all, God's seen her faithfulness in the middle of that pagan nation with all that immorality and all those things going on. N no one in that culture would have blamed her doing whatever she needed to do or felt like she needed to do. But remember early in the story, God said he had already directed her, her to provide. So she was already in tune with God. And she was already listening to the, to the voice of God. Apparently, he's already directed her to do that. And the situation looks so hopeless is, you know, is, you know, God is calling y'all in a situation like that. God is always 
calling you to Himself. And so, when something looks hopeless, see, this is God drawing you to, your, to Himself. He wants to show you who He is. He wants to show you His great love for you. He wants to show you that He can enter into your world and come right into where you are. Y'all, he's, he's just looking for a faithful heart in the middle of it. Y'all, trouble, trouble is just a way to turn to God. And this situation looks hopeless. But look, if we could learn to look beyond the, the trouble and look to God. Look at Jeremiah 31.3 and think of everything in light of this. Y'all, he says, the, the, the Lord said, I've appeared to me in old saying, Yes, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness, I have drawn you. See, God's, God's everlasting love is eternal love. It had no beginning and it's not going to have an end. God's never going to quit loving you. And it, it, this loving kindness word is the nearest word we have in the Old Testament to the New Testament word grace. You know, then, and so, so God is using the situation, y'all, to draw us. If we could just take our eyes off the trouble and look up to Him. Y'all, you know how an eagle fights a snake? Eagles don't fight snakes down on the ground on the snake's territory. Eagles take that snake up into the heavenlies. And they, and they take care of him up there. They fly up, they fly up into the heavenlies where a snake can't fight. And that's what we need to do with our troubles, y'all. When we got troubles, we need to soar up into the heavenlies with our God and our Father and see, see it from where He is and let Him look down on those troubles and get where we can rise above our troubles and see them for what they are and then fight the enemy after we get up in God's presence. Y'all, we need to soar up there and God, God's just waiting on us. Now, we're... we're and then now we're ready to see God move in supernatural ways. Look at number three, y'all. Miracles mess with God's natural laws. I mean, mir miracles just set things aside. You know, because he's, they're, they're His laws. He can do whatever He wants to with them. And so Elijah tells her, Don't be afraid. Go home and do as you have said. But first make me a small loaf of bread from what you have and bring it to me. And then make something for yourself and your son. Then, he says, for this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says. The jar of flour will not be used up and the jug of oil will not run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the land. Y'all, the first thing I want us to see about this is that God's children do not have income problems, y'all. We have heart problems. Right. Yeah. Oh, we, we, got, we, got, we don't have income problems. No child of God who's the child of the living God who created this world and everything in it. Y'all, we don't have income problems. It might look like it. It might feel like it. And we might get tested sometimes. But we really don't have because our Father in Heaven has promised to meet all of our needs according to His riches in Christ Jesus. And that, that doesn't necessarily mean Cadillacs and Mercedes. But He does, he does promise to meet all of our needs, y'all. And so, so He says we don't have income problems. we got heart problems. He tells her... Don't be afraid. It literally says, stop being afraid. You know, you, you know this God. Stop being afraid. She was afraid. She's living in poverty-stricken, terrible situation. How? I mean, it, it's normal. It's natural. We all struggle with that. But, but see, if you didn't know the whole story, it would seem cruel to ask that widowed lady with just a little bit of food left, to go and take some, of it from, take some of it from her. To ask her to give up some of that last little bit she had. See, if we didn't know the whole story, we'd think, well, that's totally unreasonable. Y'all, it, it sounds totally unreasonable when people are struggling financially to ask them to give the portion that God commands us to give that tithe, give that 10%. Y'all, it does. It, it seems 
totally un, unreasonable because it, it doesn't work the way this world works. God puts, puts his supernatural spin on it. And he messes with the, the amount of money and everything and makes it go further and, and does all that. But see, God didn't want her afraid. He doesn't want his children afraid. Y'all, he wants, he, he wants you to live like you're a child of this God. And there's no reason to be afraid. Y'all, we're afraid that if we, if we really give what God's telling us to, that He won't be able to meet our needs. We're, we're afraid of that. You know, and, and God, doesn't, God doesn't want us living that way. See, if we can see past the immediate money problem, see, we don't have an income problem. We got a heart problem because we've got a God who can multiply five loaves and two fish and turn it into enough to feed 5,000 people. Yes. Y'all, and y'all, sometimes, see, we need, we need to break from this materialistic world and stop being afraid of it. Stop being afraid of, of what's going to happen. And, and the way we do that is making that break with it and giving. The portion that God has. See, see, this was this was an extremely critical situation that that Elijah was in, y'all. And and uh, God is revealing His love to them in the middle of this, just like He will for you, y'all. But put and then the second thing is put God's kingdom first, y'all. You know how Jesus. You know He said that. Seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all this other stuff. All this stuff that we're worried about and stressed out over. He said, give that to God. Just seek Him first. He'll take care of everything. He said, so Elijah tells her, but first make a small loaf of bread for me from what you have and bring it to me. Y'all, this is the way it works. It looked totally impossible to ask that poor lady to give something, give when she didn't have anything to give. Y'all, she could not afford to do that in the natural realm. There was, there was no understanding of that. It doesn't make any sense whatsoever when you're stressed out and struggling over money for it to give that much to God every month. It doesn't, but I can assure you based on this word and about 30 years of experience from myself and I don't know how many others that I've seen it work for them. But y'all, we don't, we wouldn't even, you know, God doesn't have to do it just because it works. It's His anyway. Everything belongs to Him. Y'all, that, but that's just the way faith works. Y'all, and it, it doesn't take any faith to give what you have left over after you pay your your cable TV and your $125 Nike shoes and your nice car and your fancy clothes and all. And, and you give him what you got left. Oh, well, that, that doesn't take any faith to do that. See, all that is putting your kingdom first. Jesus said put his kingdom first and then he moves in. Yeah. And you can, have all, you can have nice things. God wants you to have nice things. But he's going to provide them for you. And it's going to be probably more than you'd have had the other way. Y'all, but look, y'all, Elijah had the word of God for this pagan king. Y'all, there was a whole lot at stake there. The whole northern kingdom was about to slip right into being disintegrated right into that pagan culture where you wouldn't even know a Jew today. You know, they were about, about ready to slip right into that. And as I've told you, Ezekiel, Daniel, Isaiah, and all of them wouldn't have been in the pipeline with all those prophecies about the Messiah. And so Elijah had God's word for that wicked king that was going to turn the situation around. And so it was, it was imperative, I mean, absolutely necessary that Elijah be sustained so that he could deliver that message. And this was part of his preparation as, as well. Y'all, but God has, God has people for this church to reach. You know, God wants to keep, keep some people out of hell. You know that? From, right from this church. He, he, wants to, he wants to keep people from going to hell. In fact, we want to make it hard to go to hell 
from this community. Right? Let's, let's, get to, let's do that together. You know, we've got 5,000 packets of materials that we're going to start handing out this coming Saturday at 10.30 in the morning. I'm asking whoever will come and join with me. Y'all, and then in those packets, we'll have a flyer about our barbecue and soul, but it'll have materials on how people can be saved and information about our church. Y'all, so number, uh, lastly, C, expect God to keep his promises. And he says, for this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, the jar of flour will not be used up and the jug of oil will not run dry. Y'all, she had God's word through the prophet Elijah, just like you have God's word through the other prophets about Jesus Christ, y'all. Y'all, if God can't supply your needs, how's he going to get you to heaven? Really, seriously. Absolutely. You know how this lady learned that God would provide for her? By doing it. That's how she learned it. You know, given that food when it looked impossible, she learned it. Y'all, this is the best way to learn anything with God, through personal experience. Y'all, that's that's the best thing. When, When you come into contact with the living God and you see Him move right into your life, and see, they they got to see this week in and week out every day until it rained. And you can too. God wants that for you. Now, he so longs to reveal how personal he is to your situation, to you. In closing, y'all, look, look in 1 Kings, the last couple of verses it says, So she went away and did as Elijah told her. And there was food every day for Elijah and for the woman and her family, for the jar of oil was not used up. And the jug of oil did not run dry in keeping with the word of the Lord spoken by Elijah. She got to see firsthand, up close and personal, God's faithfulness to her. Y'all, you know, I, I've said it a thousand times, y'all. If I didn't believe anything else, I'd believe God for that. I, I, like I said, for 30 years, I've just seen, I've seen God do amazing things, y'all. That's all I can say. But y'all, God is faithful to keep His promises. And He'll keep His promise to you. If you will turn to Him right now and call on Him, He promised that if you will open your heart, ask Him to come in, He will come in. He says, I'm standing at the door and and I'm knocking at your heart. Y'all, if you'll just believe, that's all. It's all He asks us to do, just believe. That's all. So would you do that today? Would you, would you turn to Him? Well, y'all, would you say yes to Him? Today. Right here, right now. And God will come right into your life. Y'all, He so, he so loves you. And he's, he's, God longs to reveal Himself to you. Y'all, He wants to show you who He is he wants to show you that, y'all, he, he will take this word right here and show you how much greater He is than ink on a page. Oh man, He will make it come alive to you in an experiential way, one-on-one with Him. And you'll never be the same. You'll never want to go back to the old way. Now just open your heart to Him. Trust in Him right now. Our, our group is going to lead a Uh, lead us in a song of meditation and we want to invite you to come to the front if if there's a need that you have that you'd like to pray about please feel free to come or maybe there's uh maybe you need to rededicate yourself or something like that and we're going to receive an offering y'all the the offering is most people go to gracememphis.com and click on give uh you can text a gift to 84321 And you know, y'all, we don't talk about money around here much at all. But it's part of our our Christian stewardship. 
And we'll receive an offering here in just, just a minute. And y'all, I want to say thank God for all the people who give online. I mean, God bless you, man. Thank you. Y'all, uh, it's amazing what this church can do, this small of a church can do. It's, it's just amazing what we get to do because of the faithfulness of God's people. God bless you. Thank you.